Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be implementing some of our local services. So let's go ahead and get started. Because there's so much to cover, I'm not going to be highlighting every single line of code. I'm going to be doing my best to highlight the main ideas and the point of interests that you should be focusing on as we go through these exercises. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be implementing a add assignment method. As the name implies, this method is going to be adding an assignment into our database. So let's go ahead and see how we're able to do that. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you've gone through a Gradle refresh so that all of the classes that have been generated in the previous exercise has shown up here. So I'm over here in my gradebook service, I'm going to expand out the source main Java and I'll expand out this project explorer so that we know uh, which folder or which package we should be in. I'm going to be heading over to com life ray training gradebook service impul. And we're going to head over to the assignment local service impul. So the assignment local service impul again is where we want to implement our services. Whenever we do make sure to rerun service builder. So right now it's empty. Take note that it is extending assignment local service base impul holding down the shift key or the control key lets me go into the class like so. A lot of the typical services that you would imagine existing actually exist here within the assignments local service impul. So heading over to show view, getting the outline allows us to take a look at all the different methods within the class that I'm looking at. So you'll have your typicals like update or get assignment, update assignment, and you'll find add assignment. So you may be wondering why do we even need an add assignment in the first place? Again, this is life rays best implementation, given that there's so many different types of implementations out there for adding an assignment. So given your specific use case, adding an assignment might look different than mine or somebody else's. So life rate does its best to keep it generic, but gives us the flexibility so that we can modify, or I should say, add to what already exists. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, what that'll look like. So I'm going to head back over to my exercises. We're on implement assignment local service. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to be copying the add assignment method like so. Right here within the class, I'll just bump this down a little bit and then paste. I'll use control shift O to bring in any necessary imports. The import that we're going to be bringing in is the top one, the life ray portal kernel model group, bringing in life rate groups or life rate sites. Right, we're going to use the life rate service context one more, and we'll use the Java util date. And then we'll save along the way. Okay, we won't highlight everything, but I'll highlight some of the key ideas here. So I'll right click here on the left hand side, right where this kind of blue bar is so that we can get around the same page, or at least you know where I'm talking about. So first three lines of code here, we're going to be grabbing the specific site, the user ID, and then the user. We're going to be using these to set the various attributes of the assignment that we are creating. Right, we're going to be getting the assignment ID, right? This is the primary key. One thing that we like to do here within the life right world is rely on a service to help us get this primary key. Again, many different databases that LifeRay supports. So rather than relying on the database to increment the primary key for us, we're going to be using the service so that it's a very consistent experience across all the databases that LifeRay supports. Uh, so we create the assignment object, right? We pass in the assignment ID number so that it can be set. And then we populate the fields that we defined in the service.xml that service builder then created for us, right? So a lot of these are grabbed from the life ray world. The other ones are going to be passed to us. And then the last point here that I want to highlight on line number 92 is unless we know exactly what we're doing, we're typically more often than not going to be calling the original implementation of whatever method that we are in this case, extending. So in this situation, right, we are calling the add assignment that exists over in assignment local service base impul. 
All right, so very good. This is the add assignment method. Let's keep on going. Next one here is going to be the update assignment. So nothing too fancy going on here. We're going to get the assignment based off of the assignment ID number that's passed to us. And then from there, modify a couple of fields, right? The title, the due date, the description, and then tacking on or adding a modified date as well. Again, best practice is to always call with the super classes method, right? Just to cover our bases, to make sure that Liferay isn't doing something that we are unaware of and accidentally forget to do. So again, good practice is to always call the super classes method. Okay, next up, and this is probably my favorite part, or at least my favorite thing to discuss uh, when we're looking at implementing our services, right? These are going to be the finder methods. So copying those and pasting those there using control shift O or command shift O if you're over in the Mac world, we're going to bring in the Java util list. And then we're going to be using the library validator. So from here, we'll go ahead and click finish. I'll save the file and we should see all of our errors go away. So you might be thinking, hey, Eddie, why do you like this so much? The way that I draw this physically when I did trainings back in the day really helps cement kind of the, the brilliance of Service Builder, in my opinion. So in the lecture, we talked about how the service layer and the model layer are actually separated from each other. And how do we get those two layers to communicate with each other? Well, this is where those finder methods are very useful. So what we do here is from our assignment local service in pull, we're calling the API over in the persistence layer. So we see assignment persistence here, and we're calling the find my group ID. Since we're here in the assignment local service in pull, we are creating a method and thus exposing to our client a way to communicate with the persistence layer through the service layer. So I just think that's really cool. So we're creating a method called get assignment by group ID. The client can then call this method. It then calls the assignment persistence API to find an assignment by the group ID that we're specifying, right? And then the list goes on and on, creating methods, exposing these methods to the client via the service layer so that the client has a way to communicate with the persistence layer. We're doing this in a number of different ways, as you can see through the quite a quite a number of different methods that you can see here. And then down here towards the bottom, we're not going to talk about these too much just yet, but we're going to talk about dynamic queries a little bit later, a way where we can search or query the database with some custom SQL. So we won't worry too much about these for the time being. But again, these finder methods up here are kind of the main emphasis in creating a way for us to expose to the client via the service layer a means of calling methods in the persistence layer to search for things. So the last thing we're going to do, this is more so good practice. This is not 100% essential, but we want to make sure that the original add assignment, and the original update assignment that we are overriding is not going to accidentally be called. Again, you know, by some misfortune, somebody doesn't realize, hey, we've updated the add assignment and they're still using the old one. So we want to make sure that they get some sort of warning message or an exception saying, hey, this is no longer supported. We can maybe be more detailed and say, use this other method. Uh, these are the parameters. So let's go ahead and add that in. So down here at the bottom, I'll go ahead and add these and then we'll save the file. So let's do a final code review, right? We'll go ahead and run through the code, make sure everything looks good. All right, so I think everything looks good on my end. I'll go ahead and get these windows back over here, heading over to Gradle Tasks and rerunning Service Builder. So I'll go ahead and run Service Builder one more time. All right, everything looks good. The build was successful back over in my project manager. Again, my rule of thumb is whenever we are running Service Builder, we are always going to run a Gradle refresh afterwards, just so that all of the updates that have been made in Service Builder are picked up over in our Project Explorer. I can't tell you how many times that 
I've sat in a training and we're trying to find an error and the error was just, we just needed to refresh things. So keep that in mind. So this wraps it up for this portion of the exercise and I will see you in the next video.